We have a very long history of living in this place and we're seeing a change in landscape. Glacier Park is revered by Americans. It's one of the most popular parks, but it's also, I think, important for Americans to understand that it is a tremendous asset for examining issues like climate change. Glacier National Park is in northwest Montana and it adjoins the Canadian border. To the east, we have the Blackfeet Nation, and to the south, we also have the Bob Marshall Wilderness Complex that is buffering us. To the west, we have the Flathead Indian Reservation, and we also have Forest Service lands in the Whitefish Range. So all of these completely cocoon Glacier National Park in very largely protected landscapes. For the last 25 years, we've been studying the impacts of climate change on Glacier National Park. And one of the most obvious responses is that the glaciers are getting smaller. They're melting in response to the increased temperatures. There were at least 150 glaciers here about the time that the park was founded. And now there's 25 left that we think are large enough to be truly glaciers, which is ice that moves under its own weight. And many of those remaining glaciers are getting smaller pretty quickly. For instance, this year we had a dramatic event at Grinnell Glacier where uh, in one moment, a huge chunk of the glacier calved off. So that glacier lost 10% of itself in just one event. Certainly glaciers can't keep doing that and be around for very much longer. My name is uh, Joe McKay. Inisquinatops, or power buffalo in the language of my people. I have a dance troupe. And we actually perform at the Glacier National Park Visitor Center. And one of the things I do is visit with the folks at the park about glaciers. We all know, whether you look at it culturally or scientifically, water is the lifeblood of the universe. In our world, glaciers then are not just drying up or disappearing. Glaciers are dying. In Glacier County, there's a lot of agricultural products that get shipped out all over, whether it's barley or wheat or the beef that is raised here. People are having to change their planting seasons. They're having to be very mindful of their water holes. Some of those are not being replenished. My name is Stanley Grizzly Bear but my English name is Mike Dergalo. I'm the environmental director for the Confederate Salish and Kootenai tribes, and I'm also the climate change planning coordinator. The northwest side of the reservation, the water table has dropped about 15 feet in the last 15 to 20 years. This is about the lowest I've ever seen it in my lifetime. So that's one of the effects of not having the amount of snow and snowpack in the mountain. That means less water availability for the farmers and ranchers that are irrigating down in the valley. When we started developing the climate change strategic plan for the tribes, we felt that it was very important to include traditional knowledge. And part of that knowledge is the values and the respect that the people have for the land and for this area, for the animals, for the air, for all the things that are here. And those values will live on. I think every religion has some belief of a higher power. For Indian people, interacting with that higher power many times has to do with being in nature. And we're causing global warming because we put economics and material wealth ahead of quality of life and sustainability of the earth. And to me, it's kind of as simple as that.